Hi everyone, if this is your first time watching these videos, thank you for joining me today. And if you have been following along with this video series, welcome back to another IELTS preparation video. My name is Joanne and today I'm going to talk to you about the speaking section of the IELTS exam. Today I will be focusing on part one of the IELTS exam and our topic is work. Remember, the speaking exam lasts roughly 15 minutes and is split into three parts, the interview section, the individual long-term section and the two-way discussion section. Be sure to take a look at the previous videos in this series for more help and information. You can find information on the exam itself, as well as tips and example questions and answers. As I said, Part one of the exam is the interview section. In this section, the examiner asks the candidate general questions on some familiar topics. For example, food and health. Our topic today is work. This part of the test focuses on the candidate's ability to communicate opinions and information on everyday topics and common experiences or situations by answering a range of questions. Let's take a look at some vocabulary that will help you talk about your work. When it comes to talking about work, there is a lot of vocabulary that you can use. So, can you match the word on the left with the correct definition on the right? Your first set of words are number one, permanent, number two, temporary, number three, full-time, and number four, part-time. I suggest that you pause the video here so you can make a note of your answers. Are the answers. How many did you get correct? Did any surprise you? I suggest pausing the video here to make a note of any that you got wrong or found difficult. Here is the second set of vocabulary words and definitions. So, can you match the word on the left with its correct definition on the right? Your words are number five, freelance, number six, a volunteer, and number seven, overtime. Again, I suggest that you pause the video here so you can make a note of your answers. Here are the answers. How many did you get correct? Did any surprise you? Remember, knowing the meaning of a word is a lot easier than being able to use it correctly. So, I suggest that you try to create sentences with the new words from today. Remember to share your sentences in the comments section or with your teacher. Now it is time for our first sample question of the day. The question is, are you working or studying at the moment? And the answer is, I am working full time at the moment, but it's just temporary. Next year, I want to go to graduate school. So I'm working at a convenience store to earn enough money to support myself. So that's a solid band six answer. As I mentioned, one of the marking criteria is lexical resource or the candidate's vocabulary and how well they use it. So, how can we improve this answer? As many of you watching this video want to go to university in the UK, you'll be aiming for a band seven or above. Here you can see the marking criteria for a band seven score. So a band seven is referred to as a good user. So, you can make some inappropriate choices, but you should be able to use vocabulary flexibly and use some less common words. You can find all the marking criteria on the IELTS website. I'll share a link for that in the comments. Let's take another look at the question with some suggestions this time. Remember, the question was, are you working or studying at the moment? As you can see, I added in to get my master's and I added in right now. Remember, 
try to be positive and enthusiastic when you are answering the questions. Let's take a look at the second question for today. Our question is, in five years time, what job would you like to have? And the sample answer is, I would like to be a translator for a big company. I want to be able to translate from Japanese into English and Chinese. I have thought about becoming a freelance translator, but I think it is better to have a permanent job. So I'm going to apply to lots of large companies. Considering lexical resource, what do you think we could do to improve this answer? Remember, the question was, in five years time, what job would you like to have? As you can see, I added in, in five years time, and I added in, as it would be more stable. Here is our third sample question for today. Our question is, how did you decide what career to pursue? And the sample answer is, that's a good question. I loved languages at high school. I always studied English very hard. I think my teacher suggested it to me. So I thought, that's a good idea. My parents also think I can earn lots of money. So they encouraged my decision. So considering the marking criteria, what do you think we could do to improve this answer? Let's take a look and see what I changed about the answer. Remember, the question is, how did you decide what career to pursue? As you can see, I added in when I was and I changed studied English very hard to applied myself in English class. Now it is time for our final question of today. Our question is, please tell me one good point and one bad point about your current job or course. And the sample answer is, well, one good point is that my work is not very stressful at all. In fact, it's very easy. I work at night, so it's not so busy. The bad point is that it can get very boring. Sometimes I have no customers for more than an hour. I almost fall asleep sometimes. So, what do you think we could do to improve this answer? Here you can see the changes that I suggested. Remember, the question was, please tell me one good point and one bad point about your current job or course. As you can see, I changed very to particularly, and I changed boring to monotonous, and I finally added in as it can get a bit tedious. Instead of using the most common word, try to pick a more advanced one, but remember to ensure that you understand the meaning well and that you can use it correctly. Here are all the sample questions from today. Our questions were, are you working or studying at the moment? In five years time, what job would you like to have? How did you decide what career to pursue? And finally, please tell me one good point and one bad point about your current job or course. So I suggest that you pause the video so that you can make a note of all of these questions so that you can practice them further at home. Now it is time for our tip of the day. So our tip is, remember, they are testing your English, not your ideas. So unlike the IELTS writing test, in the speaking test, the examiner is assessing your speaking skills only. Today, I will be focusing on part two of the IELTS exam and our topic is work. Remember, the speaking exam lasts roughly 15 minutes and is split into three parts, the interview section, the individual long-term section, and the two-way discussion section. 
Be sure to take a look at our previous videos in this series for more help and information. You can find information on the exam itself and useful tips, as well as example questions and model answers. Today, we will focus on part two of the exam, which is the individual long-term section of the exam, and it lasts roughly four minutes. This part of the exam assesses your ability to speak at length on a given topic. The examiner will be looking at if you can organize your ideas coherently. In this section of the exam, you can talk about your own experiences. The marking criteria that I'll be focusing on today is fluency and coherence. So you might be wondering what fluency and coherence is. Well, this refers to how good the candidate is at talking at the right speed and how good they are at connecting their ideas together. The candidate needs to be able to understand and follow the rules of language at a word, sentence and text level. Remember, in the IELTS exam, you can score between a band one and a band nine. Here, you can see what you need to do in order to obtain a band seven. As I have mentioned in previous videos, a band seven is referred to as a good user. Therefore, you are allowed to hesitate, repeat and self-correct at times, but you should be able to speak at length without loss of coherence. So I will share a link to the full marking criteria in the comment section. In part two of the exam, the examiner gives the candidate a task card that asks the candidate to talk about a particular topic. It includes points to cover in their talk and instructs the candidate to explain one aspect of the topic. Candidates are given one minute to prepare their talk and they are given a pencil and a piece of paper to make some notes. It can be tempting to create an answer that you think will sound good. But as you are required to speak at length whilst being assessed on how coherent your answer is, I suggest that you draw on your own experience. Being familiar with the events of the story will make it easier to speak coherently about them. Let's take a look at some vocabulary to help us talk about work. Job descriptions in English are usually very specific. If it is difficult to explain your own job, you can describe the company. For example, I am an administrator for a web design company is better than saying I am an office worker. So, can you change this unnatural job description into a more specific and natural one? I suggest that you pause the video here to make a note of your answers. Let's look at the new sentences. The answers are, number one, I am an administrator for Matsushita, an international accounting firm. Number two, my mother works for Cutco, a discount chain. Number three, she works in sales for an academic publisher. Number four, he works part-time for a building firm. What suggestion did you come up with? Try to share your ideas in the comments below or with your teacher. Now let's take a look at a practice question. The question is, tell me about your dream job. You should tell me what tasks you would have to perform, where and or for which company you would do it, what would be easy and or difficult about it, and explain why it is your dream job. Remember, you have one minute to plan. Did you know research into what students do in the preparation time shows that only around 60% think about how to organize their ideas and 12% think about nothing. It is important to use your planning time well to maximize your score. I suggest writing one or two words per bullet point. Then when you are speaking, 
move your hand down as you cover each point. This will help to ensure that you cover all of your points. Let's take another look at the question. Remember, our question is, tell me about your dream job. You should tell me what tasks you would have to perform, where and or for which company you would do it, what would be easy and or difficult about it, and explain why it is your dream job. In my example, I'm going to write the following words. Yoga teacher, own company, teaching, getting clients, business side, enjoyable, self-determination. Remember, you have one minute to prepare. So take a deep breath before you start so that you can remain calm. After your planning time ends, your two minutes of speaking time begins. So I could start by saying, that's an interesting question. To tell you the truth, I am quite happy with my current career and job. However, if I was to change careers, I would want something very different. I would want to set up my own yoga school. So I would be responsible for teaching lessons and the business side of things too. I would then move on to the second bullet point and I would say, my dream job would involve setting up my own company. So I would be working for myself. I think to begin with, it's realistic to expect that I would need to rent out a space in say a community center to teach lessons, to build up awareness and a clientele base. After a few years, it would be amazing if I could teach out of my own studio. I would then move on to the third bullet point and say, since I currently work as a teacher and I previously have coached dance and gymnastics, I expect that the teaching side of running a yoga business would be very familiar to me. I would therefore find it relatively easy in comparison to say the business side of things. I expect in the beginning anyway, I would find the business side of things, such as negotiations, getting clients and the organization more difficult than teaching. I would then move on to the fourth and final bullet point and say, I would say that setting up a yoga school would be my dream job as I think it would be enjoyable to teach yoga. Also, I think that if I was able to set up my own school, I would have more control over my life as I would be working for myself. Now you have covered all four bullet points, you should be able to speak for around two minutes. Remember, you are expected to speak for around two minutes and the examiner will stop you once your two minutes is up. If I still had time left, I could say the following. I enjoy doing yoga and have wished to study for a yoga teaching certificate for quite a long time. It would be amazing if I was able to attain my teaching certificate and then go on to set up my own school from the ground up. I understand that this would be a lot of work and come with a lot of learning, but I think it would be worth it in the end. To practice speaking for two minutes, try recording your answers to see how long they are. Remember to speak at a normal pace. Don't slow down your speech to reach the two minute time. Now it's your turn. If you haven't already, please get a pencil and some paper and write down four bullet points. Your question is, tell me about a challenging job or career you know about. You should say, what the job is, what tasks you have to do in this job, why this job is challenging, and explain why you picked this job. Remember, you have one minute to prepare and you should write one or two words per bullet point. I suggest that you pause the video here and set a timer for one minute so that you can practice. When your one minute is up, your two minutes begins. Don't forget to move your hand down as you cover each bullet point, as this will help to ensure that you cover all of your points. Let's take another quick look at the question. 
Remember, your question is, tell me about a challenging job or career you know about. You should say what the job is, what tasks you have to do in this job, why this job is challenging, and explain why you picked this job. I suggest that you record your answers and then play them back so that when you're finished, you can check your answer against the marking criteria. Try to think about the length of your answer. Did you speak for around two minutes? How fluent was your answer? Was it fluent or were you pausing often? Were you self-correcting a lot? Remember, the link for the marking criteria is in the comments. Now it is time for our tip of the day. So today's tip is try to make the most of your planning time and use the paper and pencil. Try not to be one of the 12% of people who think about nothing during their planning time. At the beginning of your planning time, take a deep breath so you can try and plan in a relaxed state. Today, I will be focusing on part three of the exam And our topic is work. Remember, the speaking exam lasts roughly 15 minutes and is split into three parts. The interview section, the individual long-term section, and the two-way discussion section. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series for more help and information. You can find information on the exam itself, tips and useful phrases, as well as example questions with model answers. As I mentioned in today's video, I will be focusing on part three of the exam, which is the two-way discussion section. This section of the exam lasts roughly five minutes. The questions in part three of the exam are connected with the general topic that was covered in part two of the exam. You'll be expected to talk about it in a more general and abstract way. I will be focusing on two marking criteria today. The first one we will be looking at is grammatical range and accuracy. So this refers to the candidate's ability to use a range of structures and how well they use them. As well as the rules of language, this criteria considers the communicative functions of speech. Here you can see the marking criteria for a band seven answer. As you can see, you are still able to make some grammatical errors, but you should be able to use a range of complex structures with some flexibility and frequently produce error-free sentences. Remember, when you're practicing at home, check your answers against the marking criteria and think about what you could do to improve your answer next time. I'll share a link to the IELTS website where you can find all of the marking criteria in the comment section. Keeping in mind the marking criteria we've just looked at, here's our first sample question for today. What makes a good job? So, what grammar structures do you think we can use in our answer? When I hear that question, some different grammar structures come to mind. For example, I thought of using adverbs of certainty, such as probably or certainly. And I also thought about using modals, for example, must and should. What did you think about using? Share your ideas in the comment section. Here's a model answer with those suggested grammar points highlighted. Remember, the question is, what makes a good job? And the suggested answer is, that's a great question. The answer will probably be different for each person, and it depends on what we mean by good. A well-paying job, or a job that you enjoy and are passionate about, or both. In my opinion, several overarching things make a good job for everyone. Personally, I believe in balance, so definitely a good job must provide you with enough money to live without worry. But you should also enjoy your job. I don't believe that a high-paying job you hate should be described as good. 
It certainly may be necessary for a period of time, but I don't believe it is good. So, in your opinion, what makes a good job? Let's take a look at another question and sample answer. Our question is, how do most people find jobs to apply for these days? So, considering the marking criteria, what different grammar points could we use in our answer? Here you can see my suggestions. As you can see, I suggested that we use the first conditional and modals. What did you think about using here? Remember to share your ideas in the comments section. Here's a model answer with the different grammar points highlighted. Remember, the question is, how do most people find jobs to apply for these days? And the sample answer is, how people search and apply for jobs has changed drastically in the past 20 years. Nowadays, if someone wants to find a job, they will search online. It is now rarer to walk around handing out CVs. People should fill out online application forms or send out CVs to companies. So, what do you think? What were your ideas for this question? So let's take a look at the second marking criteria for our lesson today. Remember, another skill that the examiner is assessing is how well the candidate pronounces the language. As well as the communicative effect of the candidate's pronunciation, there is an evaluation of how much strain it causes the listener and how noticeable their accent is, although the accent itself is not a problem. Candidates do need to be able to produce the phonological features of speech. Here you can see the marking criteria for pronunciation. As you can see, you can mispronounce some individual words or sounds that reduce the overall clarity at times. But you must be able to use a range of pronunciation features and be generally understood. So, how confident are you with your pronunciation? Recording your answers and listening to them can be helpful when working on your pronunciation. Let's take a look at the last example question for today. This time, we will pay special attention to pronunciation. So, our question is, is it possible to have a job for life anymore? So, our answer is, that's a very interesting question. I believe there has been a plethora of research over recent years into this idea. From what I have seen and read, the short answer would be no. I would say that a career for life is still possible, in my opinion, anyway. Research that I have seen shows that someone who changes jobs is likely to make more money over their lifetime than someone who stays in the same job. This indicates that not only is it not really possible, but it is not advisable for individuals. So, we've got some tricky words in this answer. I recommend breaking those words down into syllables and practicing them until you feel more confident with them. As you can see, I have broken some of the more difficult words down into syllables. Let's start. First, we have a plethora. Then we have career. And finally, we have advisable. If any of those words are difficult, I suggest making a note of them and repeating them several times until you feel more confident in saying them and they feel more natural. Remember, you can always check your pronunciation by googling the word if you're not sure. Now it's time for our tip of the day. So, today's tip is try to use linking words and phrases. So, I don't suggest that you memorize whole answers, as this will sound unnatural. But, you can work with memorizing key words or phrases that could be used in many answers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, and check out our other videos.
You can find loads of useful links in the description below. Let's get started!